Mentioned Jackie Cation, she's here. First performance at the Le Meridian Cyberport Hotel this coming Friday. If you want a slice of what she sounds like, have a listen to this. <laughs> if I can get it to work for you. But the truly crazy people in Los Angeles are literally the animal people. And before I go into it, allow me to make an announcement. I love animals. I love them. People are animals. I love people. I love the tiny animals we have as pets. I love the larger ones we eat. I love all the animals. I'm like Dr. Doolittle up here. I freaking love the animals. <laughs> My husband has an iguana. It's like petting a purse, but it's a perfectly nice animal. <laughs> Very adorable lizard. And, uh, but get this, when I was a kid, of course, if you had an old dog or a very ill cat, you sadly put the dog down, put the cat to sleep. It was very sad. But they would go to happy dog or cat heaven, and you would go to the pound to get a new dog. And it's a circle of life. It was very beautiful. Uh, that doesn't happen in crazy Los Angeles land, where people are like, oh, no, the cat's only 17. We're going to get dialysis. Are you? I have a friend of mine who has a cat that is 21 years old, and in addition to the plethora of other issues going on with this cat, it now has diabetes. And so she has to shoot it up twice a day. You know what that is? Time for a new cat. <laughs> new cat twice a day? Why do you get a cat? So you don't have to do anything. That's why you get a cat. Because it poops in a box. $3,000 for diabetic cat medicine for this cat. You know what that is? That is 3,000 new cats. Because cats are free. And I have another friend of mine who has a dog, and the dog has to get a new hip, but it didn't work. And so the dog is still scooting around on a cart like Captain Pike. And I'm gonna tell you something, it is a dog. It is not ever going to be Stephen Hawking, not ever. It's not gonna write the great American novel from the cart. It's not gonna cure cancer from the cart. If it can't run, new dog, new dog. And people get mad at me in L.A. and they come up to me after shows and they're like, you don't like animals. And I said, no, I don't like you. Because uh, you're a jackass about your pet. You gotta let go, weirdo. And, because what do you get with a cat or a dog? 15, 20 years, that's what you get. I didn't make that rule. If you would like more than that, turtle, 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 turtle. Tiny turtle, hat, tutu, carried around your creepy Paris Hilton purse. Can lift its head up. Adorable. Giant tortoise that could walk slowly around your backyard for 300 years and become a burden on your descendants. Turtle. Where I go to eat breakfast in LA, right next to my breakfast place, there is an animal eye care clinic. Kid you not, animal eye care clinic. I don't have insurance, but let's get mitten some contacts. Better now or now? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's a slice of uh, Jackie Cation. Now that yeah. was from Conan O'Brien. You appeared on Conan O'Brien. Yeah, you? I did that. I did that. They, that is a very popular bit. It's I. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you. You also, I think it's featured on because you've been out at three albums so far. That's the one right, from that's the, never going to be bred. Right. That one came. That's okay. the previous album. I just dropped an album like two weeks ago, a week ago, and so that one's from the previous one. It was uh, top ten comedy albums of the year on Amazon when it came out, oh. but it was four years ago. It was in 2010. And you got a new one out now. I and think. I have a new one out. It's called "This Will Make an Excellent Horcrux," <laughs> which is a Harry Potter joke, and uh, there aren't a lot of Harry Potter jokes on it, but I. I I love Harry Potter. <laughs> well, if we get a chance towards the end, we'll, we'll perhaps feature a slice from that. Fair enough. Uh, I'm just very curious because you also, you've been running now for about almost nine years, I think, The Dork Forest. Right. The Dork Forest is my podcast. It's sort of a radio show for the internet, right? Mm. And um, what I do is I interview people about what they love. You know, like if, if you're if you enjoy Japanese sneakers, let's say you connect collect Japanese sneakers. I have yet to get someone. But I, it can be anything. It can be comic books and video games and anime and, and it often is in mm. science fiction. But it can also be bees. Or um, I, I just had a guy on from Jeopardy. Ken Jennings is on this week's episode. He loves that geocaching, which is the game where you it's like a worldwide scavenger hunt okay. so he said that somebody he was in angor wat in cambodia mm -hmm. and um someone had hidden something in the ruins of angor wat which is actually not approved of that is actually not okay because that's a ruin it's not a construction site well it's actually a moved ruin as well because Did they, they moved move it, it to, to build a dam oh really oh, i did really? not know that <laughs> Well, at least some of it. I know they moved. Oh well, it's admirable that they kept it, mm. but they were like, "No, no, this is great, but we're going to need to build a dam." That's hilarious, Cambodia. Anyway. <laughs>
How did you get under, into this? I mean, it's a very difficult thing, isn't it, stand-up comedy? You've got to have nerves of steel. I know. I've been doing it for so long. I started in the... I count the 80s as one year. Mm. Uh, I've been doing it since women comics would get... Uh, Burned as a witch right after they did stand-up comedy. So I opened for Hester Prynne in back fact, in the you, 1600s. You hit a very good point there because, you know, I think you must find it a lot harder than the blokes. Right? Well, I think there's just less women. So, you mm. know, I get certain advantages for being a woman and I get certain disadvantages for being a woman. It's the way, you know, much like a white guy gets certain advantages for being a white guy and certain disadvantages for being a white guy. I'm uncertain what those disadvantages are, though, with white gentlemen. Anyway, but uh, the uh, <laughs> I started in uh, 84. I I, mm-hmm. I, I heckled some guy, a comic, and the manager came up to me and he said, you seriously have to shut up. Uh, open mic is on Mondays. And so he's, so I came back, Sundays. So I came back like three weeks later, and I've been doing stand-up comedy ever since because I got addicted. It's like heroin. And I got a 1.8 that semester. It was not a, it was not a positive. <laughs> Luckily, the club burned down. It was owned by, uh, I know, I did not burn it down. Uh, it was owned by Sam Kinison's brother. I don't know if you remember Sam Kinison, stand-up comic. Okay, yeah. I've a lot of shouting. Him, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of shouting about Ethiopia. Mm. And uh, <laughs> very funny, but he, um, I heckled him. And his, and his brother was like, you have to stop talking. And so, and I've been doing it ever since. I'm, I'm mostly in the states, but I've done. I was in Australia for ten weeks. How did they find you? They found it was really great. It was fun because we'd go to these tiny towns in Australia, and they were like, "Thank goodness you've come." Uh, I have been talking to this guy for like twelve years. <laughs> Any story that is not about him is going to be a win. And <laughs> they're just so psyched to see anyone. I was looking at the, your your second appearance, which is the first we mentioned at Cyberport Hotel, and then you're oh, right. at a, you're at a cafe and bakery in Stanley in Stanley Plaza. I know that's real sort of uh, sh- small mic, isn't it? It's a very very close. It's good. Crowd. I assume it's going to be very mm. intimate. I assume it's uh, the first one is a is a sort of a hotel theater kind of a bar kind of situation. Mm. And Michael, the the guy who organized me to come here, he said uh, I got an email from him saying, "Would you like to do stand up comedy in in Hong Kong?" And I said. I have always wanted to go to Hong Kong. In college, I had a poster of Hong Kong on my wall. And uh, it means that my wall is actually a vision board. So it means that I will one day get to meet the band Bon Jovi mm-hmm. while standing next to their jet, uh, if, 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 the, if the wall works out. But, uh, yeah, I, I, he picked all these different venues, and some of them are quite small, and some of them are quite large. And I'm like, I'll do whatever you want. We were at uh, the Peninsula Hotel in the Salon de Ning. Oh, that sounds glamorous. Oh, uh, next Tuesday. Yes. So, so you've got different kinds of venues to play with as well. Right. You must really love it, obviously. It's. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be great, just because I've never been to Hong Kong, and I've. I've. We've been wandering around. We went to Temple Street last night, and um, I'm not very good at haggling, and so there was a lot of uh, people approaching me, going, "Come on, this is going to be great. You're really going to want that jade <laughs> pair of earrings." And the, I was like, "The, the plastic jade." Yeah, it doesn't look. <laughs> like jade but i'm good i i and so but i I'm, i don't know i never know how to turn anybody down while haggling in my uh because my dad's a salesman I, he's armenian and uh i'm armenian of sorts and so we very i come proud, from very proud people too. we are a proud Indeed, people yeah. that's we're very certain we're and very uh, certain of not how, without your own problems of course of course not mm. there's a lot of hitting there's a lot of the turks are a big fan of knifing us in our sleeps and uh so but the uh uh yeah, the there's an Armenian community of China that I'm going to go out to lunch with on Friday. Excellent. I don't know if I don't know if it's all of them. Like, I don't know how many Armenians there are. I have no idea. Right? So you, <laughs> you have to email us back and tell us some yes. curious myself. Now. But you must have found a wealth of material already, surely, being here. Are you going to do a, a little thing on Hong Kong when you go away? Yeah, my favorite thing so far is the escalator, the announcements on the escalators. Please do not look only at your mobile phone. Please do not look only at your mobile phone. <laughs> I was like, ever that should be on everywhere, like in on highways, on the streets, because everyone's only looking at their mobile phone. Well, I'm doing the crush hour because while Phil's away, I, you know, I'm sort of doing the right. morning thing, uh, which which is great because get to pe- meet people like yourself. But but I'm absolutely amazed how people can manage to conduct their 
morning commute without looking where they're going. And you <sighs> see these people bumping into each other and then giving each other black looks because they right. should have been looking where they're going. It, it turns out they are not wrong. You are wrong <laughs> if right. you are texting while you are driving. That is incorrect. There was one story I'll very quickly mention, uh, which I have mentioned on, on the show uh, yeah. some years back. I was living in Changchow and I used to commute, sort of coming into RTHK because I was doing a morning show then. Okay. Uh, and part of the journey used to take you through uh, Central uh, MTR station, the railway station. And I was walking along you know sort of just and 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 phones weren't that big at the time and in fact the guy was reading a newspaper and normally the first escalator goes down Mm -hmm. the second escalator comes up and on this occasion it was coming up and i saw this it was too late to have actually thought whether i actually wanted to warn him (laughs) or not and uh, and sure enough away he goes down this escalator coming up and next thing you hear this huge crunch and then this pair of feet sort of come back up the escalator so i that is brutal quickly ran away Uh, and it was this was a newspaper related this was a newspaper not mobile phone (laughs) (laughs) just think and i wonder in the cave days if that's how it happened everybody's like no why are you still working on that tablet and uh, so uh you're gonna fall down the mountain (laughs) gone full circle we're using tablets again oh right um, okay, how do, you, how do you find your material, though? Because, I mean, we heard just there the one about the animals, which... Oh, right. Um, well, I, I live in Los Angeles. Okay. I am married to a guy who makes video games for a living. My father is a salesman, and my brothers, in order... My oldest brother is an evangelist with his own church. Okay. My second oldest brother doesn't believe in any god but Lord of the Rings. <laughs> my third oldest brother is a ladies' man. Uh, my fourth oldest brother... <laughs> is uh, perfect and my sister is a lesbian so uh i have a lot of material available to me uh, to discuss uh, i talk a lot about my family i talk a lot about do they mind they do not. They're mm. actually, I know, because some comics get into trouble. You know, their families are, are mad and at mother-in-law them. Mother-in-law jokes and right. things like that. Yeah. My, uh, my, my parents are like, well, if it gets you work. And they, they each think that it's a caricature, my mom and my dad. And I'm like, nope, it is not a caricature. But if you want to call it a caricature, we can call it a caricature. Which is, in a way, though, I suppose, what I is think, comedy is caricature, isn't right, it? Right, right. It's, it's larger than life. Mm. My father isn't, because my father is a ladies' man as well. My father, my parents were divorced, and they lived together after they were divorced <laughs> for six years, like crazy people. Uh, my dad in my old room, my mom across the hall in their old room, both of them going bananas when either one of them dated. But they get to date because they are divorced, and they divorced because my father has always dated he never stopped dating, uh, and we found out my dad had been having an affair for nine years. And you know what my dad had to say about it? He said, not nine years in a row. <laughs> and you're like, dude, <laughs> that is actually funny, but not cool. But dis- despite the fact that they're all sort of doing their own thing and total individuals, I mean, yeah. do you all get on together? Everything fine? We really do. We, mm-hmm. I mean, it's more, you know, I, I'm more, I get along with all of them. and then, But I have four older brothers and an older sister. So, like, a couple of my brothers don't talk to each other, but they always ask me how the other one's doing. Uh, some of them don't want to talk to my mom, but they ask me. I mean, you know that unconditional love? Mm-hmm. Everyone thinks that they, they have unconditional love. We have been conditioned to love these people. That is not particularly unconditioned. <laughs> I've been conditioned to love these six, five siblings and two parents. Now, you've also done stuff for Comedy Central. I think you've, you've yeah, had a Yeah, I had a half-hour special on the Comedy Central. That's on Netflix streaming, if you guys get that. And uh, and it's also probably just chopped to heck on their website, if, if that website streams here as well. Okay. Are you, so, are yeah, you sort fun. of quite visible on, on new media? You know, like, do you have YouTube? Uh, yeah, channels? I have a bunch of YouTube stuff. Uh, if you go to, essentially, it's just YouTube.com slash The Dork Forest. <laughs> and everything, if you go to DorkForest.com, if you go to JackieCation.com, you can watch me tell a joke any number of times. I did Last Comic Standing, too, wow. which was exciting. Okay. And I didn't, it was, it's a reality show where you compete to find out who's the best stand-up oh, comedy. Yes, I've seen it, yes. Oh, it's a nightmare. That's hard. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Because really? comedy is so subjective. Well, it is. Yeah, that's right. How are you supposed to go, you know who's great? That guy. And uh, you're like, well, no, he's good, but I kind of like that other guy. Or I like that lady. Or I like, you know. Do you all compare notes? you sort of get together and, and Some uh, of my friends do. I have a really things. good friend, Maria Bamford. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. But I have heard of her. She is uh, my favorite comic, and mm. she happens to be one of my best friends. But... She is the greatest comic in the world, and she loves to write together. We do joke machine, and what what she'll do a joke, and then um, and then I'll listen to it, and I will laugh, and then I will try to make it funnier. I'll try to tag it, and uh, and then I'll do a joke, and she'll listen and laugh because that's the only rule of joke machine is you have to say there's something there. 
Mm. You can't say, why would you do a joke like that? You can't be critical. You just have to accept it because the audience is going to be critical enough. You don't need to start with your friends. <laughs> you mentioned heckling earlier on, and of course that is something that you have to deal with. You have to have nerves of steel just to get behind the mic in the first right. place. Oh, thank you. And also with you. Well, uh, so yeah, I suppose, to I'm a certain right. extent, but I'm just sitting in a room talking to myself. <laughs> it's not as if people get locked up for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, the... Uh, I'm not, I'm okay. I'm not great with hecklers just because I get mad. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> well, so you, you give it back. Oh, yeah, because, well, I'm not, I'm not interested in, because with hecklers, because I, it's more like theater for me, because I have prepared jokes that I would enjoy telling. And so if people are going to get all grumpy at me and just start yelling stuff out, I'm like, we can talk later. You got a, <laughs> you got an idea about that joke. Take a note, write it down. We'll chat after the show. You can buy a CD. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do, have you actually met hecklers after the show and sat down with them? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes they get, they get because oftentimes the clubs I do, they get kicked out because you're not supposed to heckle, right? I mean, as but a... Some comedians thrive on it, though, don't they? Right. They're I am not experts. one of them. Okay. Yes. It's, a, you know, like Lisa Lampanelli and Don Rickles and mm. um, people go to the audience a lot. Jimmy Pardo. There's different comics who will go to the... And, and those are all three... Those three comics are very different. Lisa Lampanelli, very dirty. Uh, Don Rickles, very mean. Jimmy Pardo, super silly. Super silly guy where if he's talking to you and you start talking back to him, he will out silly you like where he will tie you up in knots. <laughs> I've seen him do it to audience members. It's great. He's a great comic. You've obviously had a lot of fun with it. Uh, there must be a great job satisfaction with comedy. It's, it's my favorite thing to do. Mm. It is my genuinely my favorite thing to do because everyone is everyone is psyched to laugh, you know, and even if. Even if they don't, because comedy is so subjective, people sometimes just go to see a comedy show thinking, oh, it's going to be comedy. And you're like, well, a comedy is so different. It's like mm. comic books or movies or any kind of media where you have to know what you're going to see. So I recommend that people go watch me tell a joke on my website. Make sure that they want to come see the show because uh, it's more storytelling. You know, it's not, I'm not dirty. I don't tell a lot of dirty jokes. And uh, I don't... Um, yeah, so, but, but please do come out. But if you go to JackieCation.com, hopefully you'll like the stuff you see. Brilliant. Thank you, Jackie Cation. We're actually going to play a slice of you before we uh, show off and end the show this afternoon. But just a quick reminder, for this coming Friday at the Cyberport Hotel, the Meridian, and then on Saturday at the Saffron Cafe and Bakery in Stanley, and then Tuesday at the Peninsula. Okay, I'll leave you on this, which is, uh, I live in Los Angeles, we create jobs, we create jobs like crazy, we create, Pilates isn't real, you guys, we made that up. We made it up. And it takes five years for those jobs to make it to Wisconsin or Minnesota. <laughs> Last year, I met my first Wisconsin life coach, a woman who clearly uh, wants you to live your dreams to whatever degree of success and would like you to pay her $85. That's one of her dreams, is that you give her $85. And, uh, but there's ones you haven't seen yet, Pink Dot. TaskRabbit. Uh, Pink Dot and TaskRabbit.com, they'll deliver anything you want, day or night. They'll do your errands for you. I need a box of Pop-Tarts and a crescent wrench. <laughs> Two in the morning. They will send a man to Walmart. That guy will come over to your house. You'll give him $70. He'll continue to do blow or whatever creepy thing you're doing. <laughs> and I was trying to think, what wouldn't Pink Dot deliver? Like if I called him up at three in the morning and I said, I need one bullet. <laughs> Oh, and a DiGiorno, a DiGiorno. I like the idea of it being delivered. But that's what people do in Los Angeles. They make up jobs. That's what they do. I'm going to make up a job whenever I stop doing stand-up. Never going to happen. But I might just make up a job, and it's going to be a series of uh, sleep apnea clinics for dogs. <laughs> Does your dog have sleep apnea? I will monitor your dog overnight. For $1,000, I'll watch your dog sleep. Is your dog getting the good doggy ram? Is it happening for him? 20 minutes? 20 minutes at a crack? That's how a dog likes to sleep. Is it happening? And then if it doesn't happen, I'll make the plastic mask specifically for your dog to blow air in its face. And then your dog will chew that mask. And then I will sell you another mask. And I will make millions of dollars on masks. And I have a, a parallel industry called FamilyPetAncestry.com. Don't you want to know if your cat came over on the Mayflower? Don't you want to know? You want to know? Your dog could be a member of the DAR. The dogs of the American Revolution. 
You guys are great. I love this club. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Happy New Year.